Hello, hello. I'm Brutton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we're going to talk about the Lion Weaver Burke plots. Lion Weaver Burke plots are graphical representations of enzyme kinetics that help us understand the behavior of enzymes. In this video, we will discuss what Lion Weaver Burke plots are, how to make them, and how to interpret them for the four common inhibitors. First, what are Lion Weaver Burke plots? Lion Weaver Burke plots are graphical representations of the Michaelis Menten equation, which describes the relationship between the rate of an enzyme catalyzed reaction and the concentration of substrate. Let's make the Lion Weaver Burke plot for each type of enzyme inhibitor. To make a Lion Weaver Burke plot, we first need to measure the initial reaction rate of the enzyme catalyzed reaction at different substrate concentrations. Then we can plot the reciprocal of the initial reaction rate, or a one over velocity, against the reciprocal of the substrate, one over substrate. Because these axes are inverse values, this is commonly called a double reciprocal plot. Keep in mind that these are inverse values. This means that as you move towards the origin, or the zero, zero point, the numbers are actually getting bigger. So this plot right here means we have a higher concentration of substrate than we do up here. And down here means we have a higher velocity than we do up here. To demonstrate this, look at the unlabeled line and the competitive inhibition line. Remember from our last video, in competitive inhibition, Vmax is unchanged and Km increases. So the y-intercept, which represents 1 over Vmax, will be the same for both lines. So we see an intersection here. But we see that Km increases, which means that the denominator increases. So the x-intercept will be closer to the origin for competitive inhibitors. Based on that, pause the video and predict how the line weaver Burke plot for a non-competitive inhibitor will look. So non-competitive inhibition causes Vmax to decrease and Km to be unchanged. Since Km is unchanged, the x-intercept will be the same for the uninhibited enzyme. Because Vmax decreases, we'll see the y-intercept increase. Remember that the y-axis is 1 over velocity, so as velocity decreases, the overall value will increase. Lastly, let's look at uncompetitive inhibition. Lastly, let's look at uncompetitive inhibition. Once again, pause the video and try and predict this on your own. Uncompetitive inhibition, Vmax and Km decrease. This means that both intercepts will be further from the origin than the uninhibited enzyme because as the denominator value decreases, the overall value increases. Why have two types of plots? What's the point of a line weaver burke Why can't we just do Michaelis Benton? Well, line weaver burke plots have several advantages. They allow us to determine the kinetic parameters of an enzyme in a simple and straightforward visual way. They also provide a great visual representation of the enzyme's behavior, making it easier for us to interpret the data. Finally, they allow us to compare the kinetic parameters of different enzymes to each other. To do well on the MCAT, you should be able to interpret both the Lion Weaver Burke plot as well as the Michaelis Menten plot when it comes to enzyme kinetics. Because enzymes are on both the biochem and chem phys sections, this is a very high yield subject. If anything is unclear, try rewatching the video one more time. And as always, I recommend putting this into your Anki cards. Thank you so much for watching our video on Lion Weaver Burke plots, and I will see you next time.